You're listening to Coach Mike on the Mic. Let's Talk Hoops. A podcast that brings hoop fans together and their stories to life. Coach Michael Herrera is a Texas high school basketball coach with three state Final Four appearances and a lifelong fan of the game. He'll sit down with coaches, players, and fans to share stories, game perspectives, X's and O's, and lessons learned along the way. Now, let's talk hoops. And I'm going to grill you guys with five more questions, all right? But you don't need to shoot back at me. So um, if you cook, Crystal, what's your go-to meal? Uh, salmon and brown rice and asparagus. Oh, man, that sounds absolutely fantastic right now. <laughs> Misha, if you cook, what is yours or what would you want cooked? Not that – I'm not that healthy of a cooker. <laughs> I am um, – one thing that's, like, what I love to do. I cook, like – every night like that's my big thing but um I cook pretty much anything except salmon probably and brown rice (laughs) Rodney would wish probably that I would cook a lot healthier but I grew up that was just like a labor of love that's like the way you show you care so I cook like a true Texas southern girl too big of meals um every single night and he's like who are you feeding there's like two of us and a three-year-old I'm like, well, I, I don't know, but I always understood the fact I'm not only cooking for tonight, I need to send you with leftovers for lunch tomorrow. And, you know, I look at some of the other assistant coaches and I'm like, well, he's a bachelor, like maybe he needs to be fed, <laughs> you know, so um, go to, it's really just whatever he's in the mood for. And he's so good. He's so easy. He's like, whatever you want to cook. It's more me that's asked 9 million times. Well, do you want this? Do you want this? But Something with meat and potatoes, probably, like chicken fried steak or mashed potatoes and macaroni and not healthy. You know, my wife asks me too, like, what do you want? And I'm, I'm just thankful and blessed that there's food on the table. So like, I don't, I don't care, you know, what you make, but. He's been gone all day. Like the last thing he wants to do is be bugged about, you know, what it is. So I usually start about noon, you know, cause if he's not feeling something you know, like super, super heavy. Most of the time it's him who's like, you don't need to do all that. But it's my way of, you know, saying I love you and I care. It's your, it's your love language. I don't know if you've ever read that book before, Um, right? The five love languages. So that's, that's cool. Read it. He hasn't? No, I want him. I, I have the book. I want him to read it. He yeah. needs to, man. That's uh, that's critical, important because, you know, my love language is not the same as my wife's love language. Mm-hmm. And y'all know that already. If you've read the book that your husband's mm-hmm. probably have a different love language, but actually me and his is the same. He just really? doesn't know yet. He doesn't know yet. <laughs> I got well, that. That's okay then. So you, you should be getting that same act of service then. I do. Good. 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 <laughs> good. <laughs> All right. So next question, ride a bike, ride a horse or drive a car. What do you do? <laughs> Drive. drive. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drive a car. All right. Sorry, Misha, I'm laughing. Yeah, because everyone knows the cliche Rodney rides horses all the time. I did not know until I became friends with her on face, Facebook that Rodney was Mr. Country. I no- noticed that he wore boots <laughs> through games. So, but- so, true story. So, like, I was going through, I've got like literally probably about a hundred of these questions to ask all the people that I do a podcast with, right? And I was like, yep, I'm going there with this podcast. <laughs> So what's, what's your answer, Misha? <laughs> Definitely not ride a bike. That's for sure. <laughs> I want to get into it though, but um, no, mine would probably be drive a car. Um, his of course would be ride a horse. Ride a horse. I bet. <laughs> yeah, yep. Crystal. It's not just a look. <laughs> he grew up literally this way. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question number three, the last TV show that you recorded on TV, Crystal? recorded uh, yeah so like anything on your dvr that you recorded so i've been watching you know we have like on demand i've been watching down to navi i know it's old and i know it's like so far from anything (laughs) so it's it's interesting though but down to navi has been on amazon prime has been what i've been 
uh, watching. Well, you and my wife both, you'll have that in common because she watches that thing all the time on Netflix. Yep. <laughs> Misha, what about you? I'm much more shallow. <laughs> <laughs> Housewives. <laughs> I, watch those two. I watch those two. I just started sun, sun selling Sunset or something like that on Netflix. Yeah, um, uh, anything. Housewives of Orange. I'm, I can't wait for Housewives of Orange County to come out, but um, all those type of stuff. I don't watch like a whole, whole lot of like reality, like the hip hop stuff. It's more like Housewives and that kind of stuff if I'm not watching like ID and murder shows. <laughs> yeah. All right. Question number uh, four. Do you collect anything, Misha? You, are you asking me or you want to ask Rodney that question? <laughs> because with this move. What I, do you help him collect? <laughs> <laughs> with this move, I was notified of my obsession. Um, if I collect anything, yes, it's typical makeup, shoes, and clothes, purses. Yeah, way too much. Yeah. All right, so you're you're a fashionista. You like fashion. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all. Yeah, I would say that. <laughs> all right, Krista, what about you? So I'm similar, but then I guess just to have something different is uh, like art supplies. Like Matt, actually, sorry, let me take that back magazines i love to like i try to get online and look up stuff i love flipping magazines so magazines are like my go-to thing that and then you feel don't feel bad it's like five dollars and you know <laughs> <laughs> all right uh last question all right so you have a chance to have a drink with a celebrity of any kind at starbucks who do you share a drink with Starbucks? Why yeah. can't it be like a margarita? Or I know. Well, no, no, because no, that's a different kind of celebrity, maybe. So, <laughs> no, this is just like, you know, you want to sit down and have a conversation over a cup of coffee or whatever you like to drink at Starbucks. Who do you want to sit down and have a conversation with? Oh. It's a good think, one, huh? Yeah. I think mine is probably, I'm going to be cliche and say like Oprah. I think that uh, I'm really enjoying like her as uh, uh, Super Soul Sundays and things that, you know, because she's interviewed so many different people. So she would be interesting to talk to because she's kind of had these kind of conversations with so many uh, different type of people. So Absolutely. Um, Oprah. Oh, I think you sparked mine because I was sitting here like, Jesus, I have no idea. Uh, Ayana. Yes, because I want her to fix me. <laughs> I don't see. I love it. I am constantly on a mission of growth. I love that. I love that, the growth thing. Yeah. I feel we all should. I can handle the truth. So I'm like, give it to me. Because I always tell people, like, you can't fix it unless you know. So tell me. It's that introspective piece that sometimes people look in the mirror and they falsely identify or assure themselves that there's someone else. But, you know, when someone else tells us what they see, you know, we either flee for that, flee from that, or we grow from that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you like reading books a lot, but there's a book out there, if you haven't read it, called Growth Mindset. It's by Carol Dweck. Um, it is an absolutely fantastic book about the whole growth mindset versus fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. um, so... All right. So that's uh, halftime is over now. I know you kind of mentioned about like advice that you would give to a coach's wife, but if you can, can you describe what the ideal coach's wife, um, you know, looks like, sounds like, and I don't mean looks like on the outside. I mean like, you know, on the inside, right? Um, what qualities does she have or must have in order to keep the uh, relationship successful? That That's a good question. I mean, I don't, again, everybody, I think Misha's kind of said this, everybody kind of has their own thing, but I think just um, the support and it, it can look in, it can look like different things, but, you know, even like you mentioned your wife having the house clean, like that's not the way I support my husband, but. Well, no, 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 I don't mean, I don't mean like clean, clean, clean. I'm talking about, you know, it's picked up. I should say that. Yeah. I'm even the one who does the cleaning. Oh, you are? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, or absolutely, even hands down. Like I gotta, I have to dust that thing, vacuum, mop, sweep, you name it. I like I will say, you you do a pretty good job on your floors. 
<laughs> oh, you, you saw that picture, right? Oh, yeah. Sure I was highly impressed. And that's that, that's that type A OCD in me for sure. I love it. Oh, love you it. know what? I think that is one of Robert's game day things is sweeping the floor himself. Like he doesn't want anybody else to do it. Oh, no. Yeah. He wants <laughs> to do it himself. Um, I don't, I mean, I think that's a hard question. I think that everybody has kind of their own relationship and own thing, but I think support, just being supportive would be my, and however that looks for your relationship or your love languages, since we've kind of gotten into that. So. Okay. Um, for me, like I said, it, it's difficult. It's not the same for everybody. You know, what works for me is not going to work for somebody else. Um, not everyone may have the love for basketball or sports, but you know, you love the person you're with and you accept the career that he has. Um, for me, if we're just talking about that and where I hold myself accountable and the things that I feel like I need to do is making sure that I'm supportive. It's, it's stressful enough, especially when you're at a very successful program to keep it successful because right nobody wants to lose so not adding on to that is extremely important for me making it easy I don't want him to have to worry about oh is he going to get to see Rylan um, my job is to bring Rylan there and I just feel like at that point you the child just grows up loving it because it doesn't she doesn't know any better. You know what I mean? And that's the only opportunity for her to see her daddy is, you know, at the games. And yeah, it does think that she has to stay up a little bit later, but that's kind of just the cards we were dealt. So for me, it's being present. Um, and you have to hold yourself kind of to a higher standard because you are looked at, you know, if you are the head coach's wife, I know I struggled with that for a while. Um, learning to keep my mouth shut, you know, in the stands, because I grew up a coach's kid. I understand sports. Like it's just, it's in me. Um, but you're looked at, you know, you're looked at differently. So, um, it's making sure, you know, you're a reflection of him and his program. So, and you end up wearing a lot of hats and trying to, you know, and I say this, you know, at Wagner, not everybody also has a two parent household, you know, like you talked about. So, you know, it, it's just, it, it's, it, there's so many different variables, what school they're at, you know, who you're married to. I think just being present, understanding who you are, your role, and that people are looking at you and that, you know, the athletes are looking at you as well. Who knows, you know, if they're looking at Rodney as a dad, then, you know, they're looking at you as a woman figure of maybe who they want to be with later on in life. Or, you know, if they're looking at Rodney as a dad and, you know, as a coach, you're dealing with that, you know, devil on one shoulder, angel on the other, you're constantly yelling at him, like you be that soft area for that kid. Or, you know, it's, it's just understanding all those different variables. And like I said, what, what works for what works for you. Right. And so what I hear is acceptance of your role, right? You've, yeah. you've married this guy, right? So you have to accept what is, yes. is obviously right in front of you. Um, support, you have to have that support system, right? Because like I said, but in the very, very like. beginning, yes. In the yeah. very beginning of this podcast, like we could not do our jobs without you guys, right? Without the supporting cast and keeping us in line and keeping us in check, but also being very supportive and, and modeling those behaviors as, as spouses should. But um, no, that's very good. So, all right. You kind of talked about it and I think you are kind of, uh, maybe you looked at all the questions beforehand, Misha, but the next no, question, the next okay. question is actually, so the ugly side of this life is that not everyone will love your husband like you do. Not always, but on occasion, right? They'll argue, they'll whisper, they'll holler, they'll call your husband names, or they'll tell him to take someone out of the game and put someone else in. Um, and, and you guys have probably learned or just know to bite your tongue sometimes, right? So how do you respond or deal with parents or fans that trash talk your husband? <laughs> well, um, you want to go first, Crystal, or me? I mean, I don't – I – it, for a while, I just sat on the opposite side. Like, I just don't, I, I have a mouth on me personally. So I don't, I will probably say the things that they don't want to hear. So, um, 
so I would just try to sit by myself. Um, but then, you know, if people start to sit by you. Um, I haven't really had to deal with it. I will say it's been more like on like social media or things like that. And like, you just want to just like, you know, pop off a little bit, but you realize you're part of the community and you, you're a leader in the community, even though it's not like Westlake doesn't pay right, you know, Crystal Lucero on the check, but I am, for whatever reason, we are representing them too. Like, so it doesn't matter that we don't get paid by them directly and they're not our employers. We still have to represent the school also. And I know that in Austin being a small, like I call it the small big city. I know that anytime I say my husband's the head basketball at Westlake, that people are going to, you know, put some, something to that, you know? And so I, I just bite, I do bite my tongue. Um, I try, I try to see it from their perspective too. And now having a kid, I think I get that whenever people are um, questioning things about their kid, they they love their kid the most of anybody on that court. So they just want the best for their kid. And so I, you try not to take it too personally, but just definitely se trying to separate yourself to the begin <laughs> to begin with is, uh, is important, I think too. Did you ever have to bite? You? Well, not, let me rephrase that. Did you at ever at any time speak up and say something? And then like, you're like, why did I just do that? <laughs> I, I haven't. I, um, I honestly haven't. I think I can actually, we might've been playing you guys um, at uh, San Marcos. I don't even know. I was more protective of a parent who was yelling and I kind of got in the mix between the parent and the referee that was being too sensitive. So I haven't been like, I've never had it directly where I felt like I needed to like step up or bite my tongue or say, or overstepped. Um, somebody else might say something different, but I kind of blank, blank out. A little <laughs> so hell, she I mean. She remember is what she's saying. Yeah. Thank you, Misha. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Misha, what about you? Um, back to, I guess, um, what you, I guess, first asked. Or do you want me to answer the question first? Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sure I've said things um, that I shouldn't have said. I know I have. Where he's been like, really? Um <laughs> It's difficult, you know, because it, it's not just a coach at the end of the day. It also is your husband and people are mean. It, it, and it, it's a lot different from when I was growing up, um, the dynamic of the kids nowadays and what I saw my dad go through versus kids nowadays and how parents are. And again, back to when you're at a higher level performing, you know, program, it comes with a lot of BS. And, um, so yes, there has been times where Rodney has been attacked that, you know, I felt I need to, you know, protect him and say something. There's times that, you know, I wish or I wasn't necessarily, you know, proud of that. I did, of course, it's been within reason. Um, but I'm blessed um, with him. Cause we're both very different in that he, one thing about him and he's always been is he does not care what anybody thinks of him. Um, he is going to do what he wants to do. And in return, he's always taught me like, I'm okay. You know, it hasn't got to me that far. So I seem to care more than him. Um, I guess then than necessarily he does. So that kind of helps me in knowing that he's okay and I don't need to jump in necessarily and protect him. But it, it is very difficult because people don't understand at the end of the day, like you're still attacking somebody's husband. You're still attacking somebody's, you know, father. You're, you know, you're attacking somebody on such a public forum. And, you know, one thing Rodney did tell me one time was, you know, like it, if they're not paying me and you know, they're not doing this then their opinion really doesn't necessarily matter. And a hundred, 99% of the time, someone's going to have an opinion about a coach. I mean, that just for sure comes with the territory. Yeah. I, that's exactly what I was about to say. It comes with the territory and we know that. And, and one thing that coach Hubbard always talks about, which always cracks me up is 
during our parent meeting, he'll always say that he can be undefeated from the stands too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because everybody's got an opinion and everybody should, you know, you should put this guy in or, or change your defense or change your offense and do this and do that. And the reality is, and you guys know this, that we don't go into their jobs and tell them how to do their job, even though they're wrong. You know, exactly. we're human. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to call the wrong play. We're going to put the wrong kid in the, in, at the game when he shouldn't have been in the game, right? Um, but we're, we're human, and we make mistakes. And, and everybody's going to have an opinion. You know, it, and it's one of those professions where – and the better you are and the more winning program that you have, the more opinions mm -hmm. that you're going to get. And so, you know, and this goes back – I keep saying y'all know Rodney, but to know him, he can take care of himself. Yeah. So yeah. me, it just comes from a place of just, I feel, and it's more adults than anything, you know, and it's mm -hmm. like, I get more frustrated with the fact of you're embarrassing your child. So I think that's the part that upsets me the most is not, you know, you can come at my husband or you can come at him as a coach, but your child is also witnessing this. And that I think is the part that angers me so much. And your kids at practice, like my big thing is like, your kid knows that if so-and-so might be better than them because they out practice them. So if your kid's not saying anything, then you shouldn't, yeah. Then you maybe shouldn't either. Yeah. Yeah. You're so right. I had, uh, I had the privilege of talking with, uh, William Gates. I don't know if y'all remember him from the movie hoop dreams mm -hmm. that oh. came out in the nineties. So he was, mm -hmm. he was, uh, on an episode and he talked about, you know, now that he's a father of, of boys that are playing basketball and whatnot, um, he talks about how parents are so eager to try to correct a coach when they should be correcting their child because that's what parents do. Parents, you correct your children's behavior. So don't try to correct the coach. That's not your job. Your job is to correct the child. So if your child's not getting playing time, correct your child. What, what is it that he or she's not doing that's earning that playing time, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, correct your child's turnovers. What are you doing to assist your kid with the turnovers that got him out of the game? It's don't correct the coach. It's not the coach. The coach is just doing his job. Um, but, you know, you, you said it, Misha. It comes with the territory. Um, mm -hmm. My wife had to learn the hard way early on in my coaching career when I was coaching freshman basketball. And there was two girls that were in the stands and just – talking all sorts of nonsense about me and whatnot. And, and she just, she couldn't take it. You're right. I mean, she, that, that's my support system, right? Yeah. She can't allow people to attack. And then um, she ended up leaving the game because, you know, she was wanting to cry because she didn't, she realized after the fact that she went where she probably shouldn't have, but she went there because she loved me. She supported me, but you know, and I think with anybody in, in your relationships, in your marriage, in our professions, like sometimes we have to learn the hard way, but um, you know, again, thank you guys again for supporting us, right? Because that's ultimately what you want to do, but it's, it's hard because you are in the light, you are the coach's wife and people are watching you. Right. And then once you give them that little threshold and you open that door, mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all, y'all better watch out because they're going to, they're going to try to open that door even wider next time for the next conversation. So oh, yeah. um, okay. y'all are exactly right. Um, let's see here. Misha, like your cup. <laughs> Oh, I will. I have a funny little tidbit when I saw that. So when I was pregnant and I saw Misha at one of those shootouts in the, over the summer, um, she's like, oh, yeah, you're gonna have to get this bag and this bow. And I'm like, dude, I don't think I knew I was. I don't know if I knew I was having a boy yet. And I was like, oh, goodness, I don't know if I can keep up with that. <laughs> All that stuff. So I am glad I had a little boy. And I just put some red, white and blue on. And we're good. Yeah. There you go. It's hard with girls. So we kind of touched on this a little bit, and I've got a couple of more questions for you guys. Um, oftentimes, people talk about male coaches assuming that role of a father figure or being a father figure to some of these young men. So what are your thoughts on your husband being in that role and taking on the extended family? I, I personally think every – and Misha kind of chimed in on this about the wife figure and the woman figure for the, for the players. Um, I – most of our kids do have two parent households, but I've always thought it was very important for them to see other adult relationships outside of their immediate family and to have somebody that they can go to because it doesn't matter how much money their parents have in the bank or whatever, or if they do have a, a 
two parent household, they still, as a kid and a student, they still want to have somebody to pay attention to them. And then I feel like us as a couple, like we have had um, players and not just players that Robert coaches directly, but even ones that he's worked with at UT um, as a volunteer say, you know, Crystal, we, we want a wife like you. We want to have a wife that is involved and, and, and want, you know, so I feel like we are an example of a couple that other um, players or uh, people want to be like and have in that type of relationship. And then two, um, even, even down to like interracial relationship, you know, like I, some of Robert's players have had little black girlfriends and I'm like, oh, I like that, you know, so that they think, and Robert says he made it popular, but, um, <laughs> you know, so those little silly things like that, that, um, that they feel like they see this different type of relationship um, that they maybe don't see obviously at home if they, if they don't have that or even out in the community, but they can see that between uh, Robert and I. And, and now in going back to all the race things going on, and then they realize that I'm just a woman too, and he's just the man too. And so um, some of his players right now have definitely called him and maybe Robert might be the only person of color that they even know and that they feel comfortable calling and um, having some pretty deep conversations with. And so I think that that is an amazing opportunity that a lot of um, people don't have that where they can support young men to grow up and to have that um, even big brother. It doesn't have to be father because they have that, you know, if they have their father, but having some other sounding board of an adult and having examples that are outside of their household. I think that's a, it's a big responsibility too, which I mean, I think we all, take honor into in that and we we like to win but I think that's why all of you guys got into coaching too is to be part of the people's lives right um as far as um me I like I think it's the most crucial reason and you know Rodney could tell you I think it was one of the areas that he struggled with um the most because Rodney is a highly emotional person he's a very passionate coach he's a very loud coach and he can come across sometimes as very brute and you know we just know how he is um and so my biggest thing that I challenged him on is um as much as you go on the aspect of aggressive and go after them you need to um also show that you know amount of love because unfortunately where Rodney's at, um, the school he's at just statistically wise, it's not a two parent household. Um, sometimes it's a no parent household. Um, and there are, um, or situations where there are parents, but they're just completely absent. And for me, that just breaks my heart because I view it as, and this is sad to say, but you can attest to this. You honestly spend more time with those kids than you do your own kids. And so when you're in, you know, you're in a profession where you are a coach and you're molding lives and it's at such a crucial time and Crystal touched on it, you know, right now with everything that's going on in the world, the world is so desperate for young men. So me helping Rodney understand, like, this is, a much bigger role than you truthfully know. And, um, the, you know, he would always kind of probably get, you know, frustrated with me because I tend to get latched on and want to take care of them. And, you know, for instance, last season, we actually, I don't know if you know this, but we had a player that lived with us for about four months. And, um, I mean, it was a no brainer. And at, at first Rodney, like when we first got together and I talked about that because I knew where he was at and I knew eventually circumstances and it was probably going to present itself at some point over his career that that would happen. And, um, he honestly was the first person, you know, when the situation unfolded that night and we got the phone call, he was the first person and he's going to kill me for saying this, but he started crying cause it just broke his heart, the situation. And he was the first person to jump in his pickup and go pick up the kid. And um, he ended up living with us. And I mean, it was, so I, for me, 
just him understanding, like I said, you, you, you're, you're given the most special gift that you can possibly give. And right now the world is so desperate for good young men. Like that, that to me is just the most important thing of it all. And them understanding and knowing that they also have me here and I'm not going to just love you for a season. I don't just love you because you're his athlete. Like I still, I talk to them all the time, especially this last group that went through, it was probably losing those 12, 13 seniors was the hardest group to let go. And I still talk to them. I still FaceTime them. They still are calling me, you know, I'm like, did you put your sheets on? Right. Did you put, you know, your mattress pad down? Cause they just don't <laughs> have that. And yeah. To me, oh, they're, yeah. they're my, they're my kids. When people ask me how many kids I have, I'm like, well, I've got 18. <laughs> no. yeah. Because they are like, I ask them, are you eating? Are you, you know, we had an instance with the player at, at, um, the state basketball game. I don't know if you remember this coach rare, but that fell out and had a seizure the game before state at the end of the semifinal game. And it was because he had not eaten um the day before and my god it like absolutely broke my heart and he's to this day um he's like a son to me he'll be a senior next year and like i've always told them you if you don't have food if you don't have some call me my house is always open i need to make sure you're eating i need to make sure you're drinking like it, unfortunately where he's at it's just there's not a lot of that structure in their life so for them to feel like they have something and they're not going home and cooking, you know, ramen and eating hot Cheetos, then it's not even a question in my mind whether I have to, to yeah. do it or not. So Rodney, I think, fully understands the role that he has, especially where he's at. You know, and, and that's, that's the main reason why I wanted to ask the question, because oftentimes people see us from the outside as coach right? They don't see us for who we are and what we strive to be. Yes. And I don't wake up every day to go be Coach Herrera. Yeah. I wake up every day to be Michael Herrera. Who, who am I as a person, right? And, and, and through conversations like ours, we get to know each other. You build connections, you build relationships. That's what I want at the end of the day. I want my players to know who Michael Herrera is, not Coach Herrera. Yes. Right. So that way, when you leave the halls of this high school, when you stop dribbling the basketball in my gym, you're still coming to my house. You're still calling me. You're still texting me. You're asking me questions. You're inviting me to your weddings. Mm -hmm. It's yes. it's the aftermath that I want. That's going to tell me if I was successful as a coach or not. But oftentimes parents and I'll, I'll, I'll generalize here. Parents see the coach Herrera and they forget that we see their kid maybe and not disrespectfully so we see them more than they do even if you're in a two-parent home or a one-parent home it's just a byproduct of the nature of the beast like we see your son potentially more than you do especially an athlete because they're at practice with us after school now and they fail to see the human side of the coach they just see coach and that goes back to when I said you know parents when they correct the coach now correct your kid <laughs> because because we're on the same page we're, we're after the same thing we're trying yeah. to mold these young men to be men how do we work together to achieve that and how do you recognize that I'm just trying to do what you're doing in a enemy. different way you know yeah. and I'm not the enemy right and, um I think it's different you know it's difficult in some situations because like with Rodney he can come across you know he had put a post up a while back on Twitter, something about being, you know, that he's not really, you know, this or that, that he's just a passionate coach. And I've always said people with the biggest hearts have like the biggest tempers. They're loud. And, you know, if you look back, especially on what happened to us this past um, state championship run and loading up the buses. And I actually was the one who had to break it to him. I got the call that it was canceled. And I mean, just devastated him, like pure raw emotion, crying, you know, just tears. And not a lot of people get to see that about him. And it's like, he, he loves, you know, really, really hard. And unfortunately where he's at, you know, he, he there's a lot of pressure on him to be that positive, mm -hmm. you know, role model in a lot of, you know, boys lives because there's not a constant male figure that they have. I mean, he's got everybody from 
NBA players that are in the NBA now playing all the way to, you know, a young man that he had that just got a life sentence for capital murder. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's a it's a heavy and I don't want to say burden that's the wrong word to use but it's not something that we definitely take lightly so I feel like if sadly the coach and the coach's wife is the only constant thing in that child's life then I know I need to be the best constant thing that that child has in his life even if he chooses not to contact me after high school those four years I'm there yeah so I'm I'm thinking like so you guys only know us from like Westlake really. And like it, everything you're saying is like bringing me back to when Robert and I started dating and he was at Nacogdoches and, yeah. and, um, the kid, very similar situations to what you're describing. And, and I don't know, it just, it, I was young. I was in college at the time and not even seeing it for what it, what it was. And now as a, you know, a 37 year old seeing the, the things that we, probably put into those kids' lives um, back, you know, in, in 2005 or whatever, it, you know, half of them were in our wedding and, you know, they are like our little brothers still, but then the other half that we don't have that co- connection with are going through things like you're mentioning and you, you forget about it a little bit and it, you, you just brought me back to a lot of things that we've, we've had. And, and again, high, 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 highs and when I say highs like as in wealthy f- parents and families yeah. to living in the projects those kids do still want similar things maybe these kids are eating and yeah. maybe you know the pizza hut will deliver to their house because I'm sure you've had that situation where you're like oh I'll send you a pizza and uh, they can't the times. yeah and they, they and they won't deliver like they won't deliver to their place and yeah. so they all want the attention of us and your husband and my husband and and it it's it's a it's a big response you're making me feel like the responsibility of the coach's wife is bigger than I even realized until we really we're really having this conversation and and um I mean we're blessed and honored to be part of their lives and to be a constant and me it, it was it was I would say it was the biggest thing me and Rodney sitting down and having that conversation, another example of the communication and understanding, you know, cause I do come across probably as soft and, you know, I get emotional and too attached, but for me sitting down and communicating to him, this is why, and this is what I feel. And, you know, your role is so much different. And I've even seen him evolve more and it really starting to come into play when now he's seeing these things and getting these text messages from these kids, for instance, the kid I brought up that got the life sentence, um, the day before he called Rodney, I won't cry, and told him, I wish I would have listened to your advice. You know, you made more of an impact on my life than you know. And I just told him, those are things that, this is why I tell you what I do. This is why I'm so hard on you because you're the most constant thing these these kids have you know what I mean and if they don't a lot of these kids if they don't have basketball they don't have anything else you know what I mean yeah if they're not even getting a constant meal your practice is their constant meal you know what I mean so for me it's just I may be too emotional I'll own it I get too attached but I just feel like it's our job yeah you know, it comes with the territory I'm not gonna they're not it's not just about winning or losing you know of course we want to win but I'm gonna feed you over winning <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna feed you to victory yes I'm going to <laughs> well I tell you what the way that you two just responded to that last question I feel like if I just gave y'all a microphone y'all could just like drop it because there's you know as as a uh a coach who is just simply putting together a podcast to connect people that wouldn't normally be connected. That's my purpose, right? My purpose is, is to give everybody the platform to tell your story. And, and, and you're exactly right, Crystal. Like that, when you just said, like you brought back memories of when I was at Nacogdoches and how important the wife is in this story 
It is. And that's why I wanted to have this talk and conversation with the two of you, because people need to hear that. It's, it's Coach Herrera, but it's also a husband. It's also a father. It's also a human. It's also a Christian. It's also a mentor. It's also a life coach. Like, you know, and, and people need to hear that. And, and hopefully, whoever is listening to this podcast, if you are a coach's wife, listen from what Crystal had to say. Listen to what Misha had to say, because your role is important. And we, as basketball coaches, cannot do our jobs without you. So Misha and Crystal, I really do appreciate you guys taking some time on a Sunday afternoon to talk with me um, on this podcast. But um, I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. I think it sounds like our season is going to be intact as of right now. Everything's going to be on time. Let's continue to say our prayers and keep everybody safe and healthy out there so that we can have our seasons. Um, but don't be a stranger to me when you see me. And again, I, I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart um, having uh, this conversation with me today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Hey, you Sorry. bet. Y'all take care. Be blessed. And we'll talk soon. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye guys. Thank you for listening to Coach Mike on the Mic. Let's Talk Hoops. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure you subscribe and click the notification button and then share it with your friends. If you're so inclined to do so, would you please rate and review this podcast so that I can help grow this community of listeners? I hope there was something that you heard today that entertained you or connected you to the game of basketball. If you'd like to be a guest or know someone who would be a great guest on the show, please comment below or reach out to me on any of my social media platforms. Until the next time we meet, the ball is now in your court. Be someone's champion today.